In this activity, we'll be examining how to measure color vision deficits using the HRR color vision test. For this activity, you'll be given a link to take you to an online color vision test. These online tests are useful for looking at gross deficits in color vision. However, since everyone's devices and monitors display a slightly different color gamut, the gold standard in color vision testing still remains these print books. The color printing in these books is extremely accurate, and so you never touch the plate with your bare hands, otherwise the oils from your skin can affect the color reproduction. Now due to the high quality printing, these books are extremely expensive. This one here cost about $450. Now to carry out this test using the print book, we would use this special scoring sheet. The first four plates are just a practice to show the subject what the symbols will look like as they progress through the test. And so the examiner will say, I'm going to show you some colored symbols. Without touching them, how many do you see? What are they? The subject then describes what they see on each plate, in particular the shape and also the orientation of the shapes. They should also be able to describe how many shapes they see. This is what those first four plates look like. And so for each one, have a look and see, can you see any shapes? How many shapes can you see? And what are the shapes that you can see? Once you finish the practice plates, the experimenter then says, the test itself is made up of just these three symbols, with two, one, or none on a page. Some of them will be harder for you to see, as they may be less strong in color. Now the subject is then shown plates five to 10, and for each plate, the subject is asked, how many colored symbols do you see here? Then they are asked, what are they? And then they are asked, where are they? The results are then entered into the scoring sheet. Now if you have a look at the scoring sheet, you'll see that plates 5 and 6 are for detecting a blue-yellow defect. Plates 7 to 10 are for detecting red-green defects. If the subject gets all six of the screening plates correct, then the test is finished and there's no color deficit. If the subject gets either plate 5 or 6 incorrect, but has no problem with plates 7 to 10, then the subject is presented with plates 21, 22, 23, and 24 to determine the type of blue-yellow defect that that person has. Similarly, if the subject makes a mistake in plates 7 to 10, then the subject is presented with plates 11 to 20, which differentiate between the different types of red-green defects. Some examples of the plates are shown here. Now these charts can also be used to demonstrate the distribution of the different types of cones throughout the fovea. When you're looking at something, that image will fall on the fovea. As it happens, there are very few short wavelength, so in other words, blue or violet type cones in the central fovea, so at the bottom of the foveal pit. Instead, most of the cones at the bottom of the pit are usually medium and long wavelength, so in other words, green or red cones. Now you do have blue and violet cones in your fovea, but they tend to be up on the sides of the foveal pit. And so when you're viewing an object that's a long way away and therefore subtends a very small part of your retina, then the chance of photons from that object hitting the blue cone specifically are a little bit reduced. So what you can do to demonstrate this is by using these color charts which have blue and or violet pictures on them. If you show those color charts from a long way away, then they actually look gray because the again, the chance of the photons hitting your blue receptors are much reduced just because of where they're located in the retina. Usually what you do is you hold those cards up at the front of the class and all the students sort of look at them and it looks like just a normal grey page. But then when you look closer and you increase the amount of retina exposed to light from that image, then blue receptors become included in that visual image. And so the patterns become apparent uh, the closer you view them. So it's really quite an interesting way of showing the distribution of the different types of cones throughout the retina.